the success of successful countries have come that once they acquired any technology, they were able to commercialize that technology for the good of the whole society. Internet came from defense applications. But look how internet technology has transformed the whole economic landscape. Similarly, you know, any technology, if you see, for example, uh, space technology, it all started as a very strategic investment by whether NASA or the European Space Agency, and had maybe some security dimension to it that they wanted to monopolize the sky with their satellites and use them for different means besides economic use for military use. But now, look at the space technology. It is becoming a commercial venture. Uh, what SpaceX is doing, very soon we are going to see space tourism uh, taking place. So my point is that the challenge for researchers is no matter when you, whether you are in agriculture, sector, you are an industrial or manufacturing sector, or you happen to do research for any defense project, the ultimate success is that how fast can we take that research into civil application, commercial application, and create economic value out of this research. So therefore, we are now starting a new initiative, which we call Science, Technology, and Engineering for Development. Over the past couple of years, uh, decades rather, we have invested billions of rupees in our higher education sector and building centers of excellence. I mean, you know, you just heard in 2016-17, we gave this 3D printing technology and other many other areas, National Center for Applied Mathematics and, you know, uh, some other projects to National Center for Physics. Likewise, we set up in 17 National Center for Artificial Intelligence. I hope now we have to upgrade it to National Center for Generative Artificial Intelligence. National Center for Cyber Security, National Center for New Manufacturing, uh, Automation and Robotics, National Center for Big Data Cloud Computing, National Center for Space and GIS uh, Satellite and GIS Applications, uh, National Center for Genomics, you know, there was a whole range of these centers that we set up, and some of them are done very splendid work. But now, not just these centers, but the human resource that we started to develop. In 1998, under Vision 2010, we approved at that time 5,000 scholarships for overseas researchers, overseas scholarship scheme, 5,000 PhD scholarships for local universities. As a result now, mashallah, we have thousands of researchers who have gotten their education in good universities abroad or in local universities and now they are available. But is that does that investment only mean that they should just be classroom teachers? They should just lecture in their classrooms? Or should, should do some basic elementary research work in their labs which probably can enable any researcher to have one major uh, impact factor general publication? Is that the whole purpose of that investment? No. The purpose of this investment was to develop science, technology and engineering capability of the country so that we could develop, we could develop into an advanced economy, a techno economy, an economy which is fueled by the power of technology for the good of the people. So that is the missing link. And that is why the new framework we have for higher education department or higher education commission, that each and every university should be accountable besides their academic excellence on what is the quality of research and innovation they produce. How many patents have they internationally registered? And then also, what is the quality of academia and industry linkage? How much are they able to reach out to private sector, to our industry, and offer research, offer solutions? And how much trust industry has on their research capability that here is a place where we can go and find answers 
what are problems. So these links now have to be developed. We have now at a point where we have developed these islands uh, of excellence or islands of competencies. But now these islands have to be bridged so that they form a network which can support industrialization of the country, which can support the country to leapfrog on the technology landscape. So I hope this uh, 3D and vacuum uh, technology conference, while it will focus on uh, the disciplines of 3D manufacturing or printing and vacuum technology, this conference will also have some discussion as to how these capabilities can be linked with the larger goal of development of our country. And I hope that the researchers here, all of you will devote your capabilities, your knowledge towards finding solutions to our problems. We have to go back to history and rediscover that al spirit where at one time in history, if there were Nobel awards or Nobel prizes, probably seven out of ten Nobel prizes would have gone to Muslim scientists who were devoted to research. Why? Because in Quran, God has said again and again, don't you look at the signs of the Lord in the universe. Use your eyes to observe and use your mind to reflect and find answers. How was this universe created? How days and night come? How moon and stars move? How stars are floating in the universe? You know, there is, there is a call for action that look at the signs of the Lord in the universe. How plants grow, how ships float on the sea, how rain comes, how clouds are formed. You know, there are all calls and then try to find answers that why is it happening. As long as, you know, we were responding to this call, we were doing research, we were investigating the puzzles and mysteries of the universe, we were leading the way. But when we became copycats, just cut and paste knowledge for those theory of cut and paste knowledge, you know, we adopted. After that, we went to we went on a downward slide. And today you see what is happening. There's just 10 million people who are carrying out genocide and 2 billion plus people are helpless. Nobody can stop them. And you know, the whole West is hostage to that just 10 million people. The brutality you see. Uh, in uh, Palestine, Gaza, genocide, the way it is happening. Everything is today so clear that all those values that West used to teach us, human rights, respect for you know, children, respect for women, they have shut their eyes and they have given a license to kill to Israel. On what authority? It is only the power of knowledge that Israel has. And has made those countries, you know, help us. They can't be able to stop them. So it is the power of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, that matters today in the world. So we all have to find answers in developing our knowledge capabilities and leading the way for not only our own benefit, but for the benefit of mankind. And that alone is the way forward to be a nation with dignity and nation with pride. And I hope that you know, our researchers will make us proud in history with their contribution like we have already made us proud in the mission that we gave Pakistan to the world.